we have a student population of young people that have never been the chosen ones, have never been the examples of success, have never been the ones that are doing something good. I have almost 40% of my kids are adjudicated youth. Another 30 plus percent are special education students, mostly identified as emotionally disturbed. They come to school either homeless or there's chronic mental health issues, physical, sexual abuse, hostility, anger issues. We had constant crises, intent of selling weapons, bringing in substances, marijuana, and the list can go on and on. Good morning to Horizons. Today is Friday, May 30, 2013. Word of the week is epiphany. Epiphany means a moment of sudden revelation or insight. Here's an example. The students didn't ask to get born into the life that they live. Life is hard enough. And I think that the environments that they've been raised in makes it that much more difficult. The dichotomy is so glaring. We have Yale University that sits at our hub, and yet we have one of the highest crime rates in the country ongoing. There's like nothing good out here. You see drugs, you see violence, cops, you see people fighting in a corner, you you always see something. A lot of people killed out here for, out of anger and depression and sadness. When we walk out of this school, it's a completely different world. We got, we got to worry about if we're going to get caught by the police. We have to worry about if we're going to get shot out here. We have to worry about who's trying to fight us. We're, we have to worry about if we're going to get stabbed. We have to worry about where we can go that's safe, when we can go there, who's looking for who, what neighborhood is safe to go in. You always learn, you always watching your back. They are living in a war zone. There's no space in their life to relax. My mom left us in the house alone since I was like two. She got locked up. And since then I've been living with my grandfather, which he sexually, mentally, and physically abused me. And then it got to the point where I was like 13 years old and I wanted out. We came here from a domestic violence situation, me, my mother, and my sister. It's all that's like on my mind like 24 seven, it just pushes at me. It makes me, I can't think. I always thought about if I walk home, like who's gonna start shooting or you're gonna walk by one of your friends, you're gonna say hi and he has something on him and a cop magically just pulls you guys over, you're, you're going with him too. I'll get to that point of anger where I don't remember anything that happened. I would black out until I come back to reality. And I don't know how long I stay in there for. I didn't think I was gonna be able to graduate. It's almost impossible to learn whenever you are so stressed out. They've given up hope, not only for themselves to learn, but for them to be successful. They come to us traumatized, broken, and when our kids get broken down, we need to change up some of our remedies. What we're doing here is bring more resources in to meet the needs of these students. We incorporated Dr. Rajita Sinha at the Yale Stress Center, and we had her come in and talk to us about the brain and what are the reactions that happen on a stressed brain versus an unstressed brain. There has to be alternative approaches to open up the pathways to greater learning and comprehension. And one of those was Transcendental Meditation. Close your eyes. Here we go.
we found that the meditation practice research stated it had the most benefit for actualizing real chemical changes within the brain. That practice like really calmed me down. That's crazy how just sitting here for like 20 minutes in silence can actually help you out that much. When I meditate, it just slows all that down. I don't have to think about it anymore. It helps me get that stress off of my mind. They look forward to practicing meditation because their lives are filled with such noise. These are kids that don't shut their eyes ever. We're increasing our attendance rate. We're decreasing suspension and out of school issues, expulsion, et cetera. We are decreasing the number of students that are visiting the redirection room. All those great things are happening in here in just five months. I haven't had a blackout since I meditated. I'm more focused. I'm more ready to tackle whatever I have to do the next day or the rest of the day. It made me focus on my work more. It made me concentrate more. Like, I'll come into class and get my work done before I, like, slack off. What a lot of kids get from smoking weed, the relaxation, that temporary relaxation, I get from TM. And it, it, it but it's more permanent. It stays with me. This is the biggest graduating class. The biggest graduating class. I always wanted to make my grandmother happy and show her that I was going to be something. Yesterday, I actually showed her I'm going to be something. I will most definitely be continuing TM outside of school. It makes your life easier. I mean, it made my life easier. I'm actually gonna be one of the people that just look back and be like, I actually made it out the hood. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're gonna call my cell phone and tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be good. <laughs> you're gonna be good. Thank you, Everybody has an innate sense to want to learn. Everybody does. This whole meditation process allows us that opportunity to prepare the mind for learning. They're more knowing of themselves and what they want and really having a feeling of, I can, despite, I can, because I have the power. I have what it takes to journey through whatever life will take me.